But can anyone see him running around with a gun right now? Or is he genuine? Or like, did he go out of line of sight and immediately like teleport into an alternate dimension? You got a little closer than I would want. If this was Silent Hill, I would assume that we're just in a different universe and nobody can see this. But because York's fucking crazy and talks to Zack in front of everybody and has like... Maybe disorders even regarding like how to behave in front of other humans and other social things. Uh, this might be real. In which case, I hope he's not actually firing his gun. Because he might just actually be running around like a lunatic right now. Hey there. Nice of you to stand still for a bit. Oh, you're still alive. Crap. Interesting how interesting how long the person on the right took to, to die. Like I had a, I had some sense that they were probably defeated already, but uh, I was like almost done with the other one before they ever actually went away. Sounds like they're crying going in this direction. I can't go in there though. I'd just be imagining that too. Caution your body. Per examination service, registra uh, registration, registration, good registration and filling blood. Dollar sign rhyme collection X-ray. Okay, that that sign is gibberish. It's either gibberish or has straight up typos. Uh, what is that? Ooh, I don't like that. I don't like it. What was that? Oh, it's just one of these guys. Oh, no. 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 That blurring effect and the warping forward and crap. Die. 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 Okay. 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 Ooh. Yeah, the teleporting counteracts some of the... Infinite ammo bonuses, for sure. Die, die. Gotta get them headshots. Gotta get them headshots if you want to stand a chance. This could go a little faster, admittedly. I've only gotten one item so far from a box, I think. May not be the best strategy to actually go through with them, because it's kind of a pain. There we go. Not dead yet. Not dead yet. Still more of you? What's the shiny over there? Uh, uh, get, there we go. So many bullets. No, 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 don't do that. No. Stop getting closer to me. Stop, 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 stop. Don't do that. No more deep-throated arms, please. I think I'm supposed to go that way. That's where the screaming, the the crying's happening. What's over here? Huh. That's annoying. <laughs> There's clearly a thing at the end, so I should go get that. Oh, can I just push these? Oh. Oh. It's not even faster than shooting it. Keep that thing loaded, or bad things happen. Thirty dollars? That's almost enough for a lollipop. What is this game's economy? <laughs> yeah, this was over here. It was shiny. What does this do? 
It's locked. I need a key to open it. Oh, it's probably in the crying room with the crying where I'm going to die. I don't like this. Ah, oh, look at the bed sheets moving. That's why they animated bed sheets for when I'm in bed, because they wanted to do creepy things with the bed sheets later in the game. Oh, it's so weird watching bed sheets move in a video game. What the fuck? <laughs> it's like a, it's like a weird taboo where they just all universally agreed not to have working bed sheets in any of their games. No one bothers. So now the moment it's in a thing, it's just weird. I don't want to walk up to it, but here we go. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> All right. Oh no, that's a bad sound. That's a well, that's a really bad sound. You're really close to me. It's right next to me! <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> Are you right here? Nope. There's just the two of you? Okay. I wasn't sure if there's a third one or not. Ooh. Blow those up. No? Aw. Double-sided thing a little bit. The closer they get, the easier they are to shoot. But then that's when I'm in danger. Aren't these highly- Yeah, they say they have danger symbols on them. How is that not a valid option? Come on. This game has exploding items in it, and it has oxygen tanks along the walls, and they have a giant warning on them to not shoot them. And they don't blow up! What a ripoff! I want a refund. I bet they fixed that in the director's cut. <laughs> uh, that bed sheet was so creepy, and it being it it being revealed to be absolutely nothing, and just a key card is equal parts creepy and funny. What? I can change my clothes here? Of all things. Of all things, I can sleep here? Stabilizer. Mission knife. Why not, I guess? A lollipop. First aid kit? Oh, wow. Am I walking into a boss fight or something? God damn. I guess I, I guess I should save then. Just give ourselves a moment. There we go. For save keeping. Haha, <laughs> finger guns. Invisible finger guns you can't see. Cost you a dollar to save. Man. These survival horror games and their limited resource for resources for saving, am I right? Oh yeah, I forgot about my custom little my custom little thumbnail for this profile. I literally just used the Xbox Live webcam that's attached to the to console and I I held it up to like the rock band two box cover, I think. I took a picture of that, and that became my emblem. And I was like, that, that was this is a fun little avatar that nobody else has, and and if you if you're friends with people, you can use webcam pictures as your as your thumbnail. Something else shows up for people that aren't your friends. I think I have the Scott Pilgrim one, which is also just another person with a guitar. Yeah. So jump jump start because I you, I gotta I gotta I'm gonna cut the recording every time I save today because there's thunder and lightning, and when that happens around here, that sometimes means the power goes out, and that can fuck me. So, uh, in case I lose footage, or power outage, or whatever, 
I'm just making sure I cut the recording every time I stop. A lollipop, that's like $40. Man, I can buy two deadly premonitions with that. <laughs> Seriously, I'm... I, they probably thought, they're, they're probably self-conscious about the graphics, or maybe it's just because the game was a really low-budget game or whatever. But it was so weird that it was a $20 disc game. I guess it was in the weird middle ground where, like, over time, Xbox Live Arcade games would keep getting more and more expensive, and it, came, it became more and more acceptable to charge $15 and $20 for your downloadable game. But back in, like, 2007 to 2010, like, Braid was a new thing, and Portal was a new thing, and those were, like, the leaders in anything else. There wasn't really other, other middle ground budget titles at the time. Uh, so at the time, this game probably fell in a really awkward place where they didn't know how to sell it, because it was too low budget and too bad looking visually to sell as a $60 game, probably. Unless you wanted to have real bad reviews. Uh, but also it didn't fit the market for a, a downloadable game. In particular, I think Xbox Live Arcade had a file size limit on what you could put on its service. In particular, it, that affected uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. If you play Symphony of the Night on the PlayStation 3 as a downloadable game, I think that, I think it's there, uh, you just get the ROM of it being a PS1 game and everything. But if you get on Xbox Live Arcade, while it's a pretty all right port, uh, all of the cutscenes and stuff are all gone because of the fact, like, dialogue's still there, but cutscenes and stuff like that are gone because those inflated, like, FMVs inflated the file size. And once upon a time, uh, Xbox 360 had a hard limit on how large a game could be on its platform if you if it was going to be downloadable. It was partly because at the time they had a they had a console called the Xbox Live. It was called the Xbox 360 Arcade. And I remember this because I worked at Best Buy at the time, and I'd explain this shit to people. Uh, I worked at Best Buy around the time the Elite came out. So there was the Xbox... There was the Xbox 360 Arcade, the Xbox 360 Pro, and the Xbox 360 Elite. Which were the, all of the... They were all the original looking Xboxes back when it was more curvy and less... Uh, polygonal. Because the, the, they got the Xbox 360 S is more polygonal and shiny and stuff like that. But the... Uh, I believe that the... Oh Jesus, it was awful. Oh no, now I'm remembering everything. I think the, the Xbox 360 Pro, I think only had a 20 gigabyte hard drive. And the Elite, the crazy Elite, uh, that came out years later, had 120 gigabytes, which seemed like a massive spike at the time, but that's brutal nowadays. And the, uh, <laughs> the Xbox 360 Arcade, those bastards, they sold... They sold an Xbox that had like 500 megs of hard drive space. It had it had like a half a gigabyte. So as a result, everything that ha every arcade game had to have like a file size of like 50 megs or something like that. They had to be really small. It was a requirement. And so Xbox Live Arcade, which was the premier place for downloadable games on consoles at the time, was like a series of like ga ports of stuff like Gauntlet and things like that. A bunch of really old video games. And ha have I somehow not picked this up? Or is, it the, or is there multiple or infinite? That was weird. Wait, is there actually infinite lollipops? What the fuck? Uh, but yeah, Xbox... Yeah, the, the goddamn arcade had like a half a gig of hard drive space. It was bizarre. Uh, and so a lot of games were gimped in order to fit on there. And they, it took a while for them to actually relax the that hard limit on how much you were allowed to have. Uh, and so this game might have come out during those limits. So it actually wouldn't have been allowed as a hard, as a downloadable game. Like, nowadays, downloadable games are so so normal. Uh, I get the downloadable version of most games just because it's convenient, and I don't like going to a Best Buy or a game... or a GameStop or whatever. And uh, getting a delivery just seems needless. Is my inventory full or what? No, they, uh... They stack. I have 7 out of 20, so these, these stack. I don't have to worry about them filling up different spots. Precision, uh, stabilizer. Completely restores pulse rate and also helps keep it low for long. I don't know what pulse rate does at the moment. I don't think the game's actually mentioned that. But it's probably not great news if it goes bad. I imagine I don't need to sleep. That'd be weird, right? Uh, they could, more lollipops are here. What? What the actual hell? <laughs> weird. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my history with Keith for a second there. <laughs> Hey, that's eight years ago. Some of y'all are fucking, like, 17 years old. That was when you were... Ugh. Oh, God. 
That means you were about as old as I was when I was young enough to like the Phantom Menace. So you don't remember back then very well. <laughs> this, is, this is history. This is all new. A lot of the younger people, when they first encountered a 360, was when they already had the newer brand that was like a 500... Was it a 500 meg hard drive? Ah, the shinier one. When they re... when they changed the shape so it wasn't just a weird concave thing that was bizarre shaped, but probably helped with ventilation, even though they all famously overheated, so I guess not. Hi there. Do you have overheating problems? You can tell me. I'm recording this on the shiny... on the shiny Xbox 360S, but I actually have a white Xbox 360 Pro just sitting around. Uh, it's not mine originally, but uh, whenever somebody's like getting rid of a console and they're like, uh, you want it? I'll just say yes. Because it's... it's... oh god, please die. <laughs> Generally speaking, I'll, ju I'll just say yes and accept uh, consoles that people are getting rid of. Uh, cause, you know, you never know when it comes up for my for my job. So I'll just, I'll just keep it in a box somewhere until my existing hardware fails and I need a replacement, or maybe I need to set up... Maybe I have a weird event where I set up a, a LAN and record it or something. You never know when a second copy of a console might come in handy that you didn't have to pay for normally. A smashed wheelchair. I think I see bullet holes here. You, right? you okay, buddy? You okay, buddy? You okay, buddy? You okay, buddy? You okay? You okay? I shot in the butt. Oh, wow. Evasive maneuvers. There it goes. Man, we're, fi we're, we're firing a lot of weapons in this, uh, this hospital. Are we the bad guys? <laughs> I really love the absolutely- oh, the- whoa, they're like gaunt- speaking of gauntlet, that's like a creature spawner. Weird. That's a mechanic. Alright. 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 Oh. That's blood- blood leads in there. Get it, get it. There we go. There's something funny about these monsters that if they're facing you, you're like, It's okay. I'm safe. They're still facing me. They have to slowly load into their attack formation by turning their back and go and doing the bizarre pose. They are the strangest strangest enemies. They almost feel like a parody of Japanese villain enemies. All, partly because everything in this game kind of feels like a parody. Is something coming? No? Just because like stuff like the grudge creatures and whatnot like like are like these little girls that walk in insane ways. Like that spider crawling you're doing is creepy, but also why are you doing that? Oh? That's not the voice I expected. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? I'm just gonna go over here real quick. What are you up to? You having fun? Oh god. Slow down. Slow down, we're going a little too fast. I'm gonna take a slow kind of guy. There we go. Are you dead? You might be dead. Let's go to the other one. Shit. Ah, aiming's hard. Aiming's hard. Oh yeah, the, my instinct was right. They are dead. My god. There's a lot of you right now. Why are you leading me to my doom, lady? Why are you doing this to me? Could you not? Could you just not lead me to my doom? In this weird... Imaginary dimension? Which I don't even know if it's real or not. Uh, I... Like, what are the consequences if I do die? I mean, video game mechanic-wise, I understand that what dying means, but for York, what happens to York if he dies here? If he dies in the game, does he die for real? Or like, is it is this just a weird delusion that has no consequence? I mean, I imagine this comes into the story at some point. This will get explained. Maybe it's related to the weird leeches or seeds or whatever he's finding in people's mouths. Which is the calling card of the killer. They called, I think it's called the Raincoat Killer. Or I think the Raincoat Killer might be what they end up calling the... The guy I encountered before with the Raincoat and the Axe. Which I don't even know if that's the villain of the game or not. Or if it's just a guy you get to deal with. 
The MRI room. Cool. The most horrifying room that there is. For a lot of people, at least. Never had to have an MRI. I'd like to never, if I can. I don't know if that's reasonable, but it sounds like a bad time. <laughs> I'm not that concerned about the claustrophobia. I'm not even that concerned about the very long time in the claustrophobia tunnel. I'm more concerned about the loud noises part. Like, I feel like that... I don't really want to run that test of how well I'd go with that. I don't normally feel claustrophobic, I don't think, ever, but I feel like having your head in a tube that just makes huge loud noises at you for like an hour or something like that, or however long it is, just sounds like an absolutely miserable time. There's a lot of save points in this game. A lot of first aid kits in this game. When I saw the infinite ammo and how I wasn't struggling that much, I kind of was tempted to try hard mode. But, generally, I only want to play hard mode on games that are pretty good. And I feel like playing on hard mode might just mostly make this game less fun. Like, this game's campy and intro- that's not how you type, dude. You're so far off the actual letters. <laughs> Jesus. That's a pre-animated cutscene, too. That's not even like, oh man, I lined them up wrong. <laughs> Like, this game's campy and bizarre, and it has a cult following for its own reasons. I don't think any of those reasons are its high-level play. <laughs> I don't think it, I, don't, I don't think there's much benefit for playing on hard mode in the way that there would be in a lot of other games, especially survival horror games. Because harder, harder difficulties survival horror games make the... They make the uh, relationship you have with all of your stats and all of your resources a lot more tense. And in a game like a Resident Evil 7 or a Darkwood, how many resources you have are the game. <laughs> I st so this time I found my way into the- yeah. I found my way into the place with the keycard before I actually found the place- to, or went to the place that had it. I just saw this and immediately assumed that it wouldn't be- it wouldn't open. <laughs> Pretty slow keycard reader. Lobby? Lobby. With weird artificial walls everywhere. I think the artificial walls are what sell it for me. The idea that, that uh, they probably added all the combat after the game was basically over. Uh, and, or basically done. Because there's just a bunch of artificial walls they just splattered into an existing location. Uh, just arbitrarily to make a level out of it. Whereas previously it was a hospital shaped hospital. And horror games will often come up with more dynamic. Or, uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, those are shotguns, aren't they? I don't want guns. That's bad. What? Uh, that also a shotgun? Uh. Uh, I feel like they're not supposed to use guns. This is a bad time. Oh shit. I'm gonna grab the thing and then run behind the couches. So you block line of sight with at least two of the three. See ya, bye. I'm gonna turn the light off. Maybe that'll make, spook them. Yeah, normally a uh, Silent Hill or whatever would have a dilapidated place with a bunch of blocked passageways, but the blocked passageways would be like, oh, that's a collapsed staircase or other stuff, like environmental stuff. But they have like a kind of a... Die. Please die. Do not... Oh, is that... It? It's charging up a shot, isn't it? I think when its gun's glowing, that means it's gonna shoot soon. But yeah, the fact that they put up like cardboard bo uh, walls up, basically, to create a level out of this existing location makes me think that it was a, a late addition to the d development cycle. Die! Oh wait, he's charging up an attack. He's charging his spirit bomb! He's charging his spirit bomb! Alright. I mean... Are you alive? Stop being alive. There you go. Stop being kind of a, a, a live adjacent. There we go. I appreciate the, the way guns work. Uh, 
if it was like Yakuza where they could just fire on a whim, uh, it's very difficult to survive that stuff. In Yakuza, at least you can kind of heal yourself a lot. But in this one, I'd be in trouble. They, if, if guns are as effective as you would think they would be. Ah, it's a bad sound. Oh, I'm leaving? Crap, I wanted to look around. I was just trying to pick up the items and then there's, I think there's something in the back. No! Oh, we're back. Agent Morgan, if you're so desperate, then why not smoke two at once? It... Ugh. Alright. Who's that old man? How do you know he's old? That's Harry. Harry Stewart. One of the bigger problems around here. His father started up the lumber trade and founded this town. That's for sure you can see. Always dressed like that. Never speaking to the townsfolk. And just FYI, he owns almost the entire town. Not that that makes any difference. So long as I'm around, he won't be getting away with any funny business. Ah uh, yes, the town's one capitalist. <laughs> The only one. Everyone else is in a different system, somehow. Mr. Francis York Morgan. Haste won't lead you to what you seek. Keep your eyes focused on your footing as we speak. So says Mr. Stewart. Nice to meet you, too. How did you know my name? Mr. Francis York Morgan, information desires you, just as you desire information too. So says Mr. Stewart. Harry, stop trying to get in our way. Keep this up, and even you'll have to answer to the law. Get fucked, so says Mr. Stewart. Mr. Francis York Morgan, with each rain, our town goes mad. To our disdain, unpreventable. So sad. So says Mr. Stewart. Thanks for the warning. Then we shall depart, Mr. Francis York Morgan. That's how he always is. Always spouting that nonsense. Don't give it any thought. It's all gibberish. Emily here. Uh-huh. Oh. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Agent York, we've contacted the first witnesses to the crime scene. You can interview them where they found the dead body. Excellent. I was just about to ask if you could take me there. Are we all getting nice and used to those songs yet? <laughs> it's, it's keeping track of my total clear time. I was, yeah, I was, I was, I was questioning the numbers earlier, but that's the total amount of time so far in the entire playthrough. I'm just so used to chapter conclusions being, you know, what happened that chapter. In that chapter, you killed 12 guys and took half an hour. This one's just your cumulative title. Which makes it less interesting, honestly. It makes it way less interesting because I could just, you know, it's the kind of thing you put it in like a pause menu if somebody feels like checking it, as opposed to like, here's how you did, and it's like, here's how you've done collectively over the last 20 hours. It's like, oh, okay, cool, I killed 273 enemies. Great. <laughs> what doing? Good thing I'm just finding money everywhere, because they don't pay me that much in my job. 
Not that I did all that much. According to- officially what I did is I walked in and was like, Hey, where's- where's the body? There's the body. And then I looked at the body. And I drew a, Actually, never mind, I did a lot. <laughs> just- I was just thinking about how 90% of what happened was a dumb puzzle and, uh... Uh... Combat sequence that maybe only happened in my brain. Uh... But... I still did do the important work of actually looking at the, you know, body to try to find the killer. So yeah, yeah, it was a good day for Morgan. Uh, it's amazing how he doesn't, he doesn't even acknowledge it. They, they have the one throwaway line where he's like, Now don't say anything about what happened, because they'll think we're crazy. Which, uh, he is, uh, apparently. Uh, but he just casually is like, huh, I guess I'm back in the normal hospital now. Gonna smoke. And he just moves on. Not a, not a word. Barely even a reaction of any sort. Uh, I, I don't. I, I, I guess it's a set in a different decade or something. But like, don't smoke in hospitals, man. It's both a shitty behavior and dangerous because of all those flammable tanks you saw earlier and tried to shoot. Remember? It's just a bad practice. You're supposed to be better than that. No, you're not. He's terrible. He's a garbage person. The way he drove. Oh my god. Like, this might be the most. This might be one of the most unlikable protagonists. He's he's likable in a in in dumb ways. I don't know. He's likable the way that you know he's enjoyable as a character, but he's so he's such a bad person. The body was found in the Greenvale Forest Park. That's west from here, and too far to walk. A forest park. It's the pride of the town. It has a beautiful trail leading to a viewing site over Velvet Falls. Well, that does sound fantastic. Show me the sights. Uh, that may have to wait. We promised to be there by 1800 to interview the first witnesses to the crime scene. Right, I think I was thinking about turning it down again. And that, but it was like, I was getting ready to stop, so it wasn't gonna save. Option? Yeah, probably op- yeah, sound. Let's just try to calm you down a little bit. Oh god. Well, let's go back to the D-pad. Not that it's amazing on the 360. Yeah, let's, let's just calm you down a little bit, soundtrack. You're over- you're pretty overblown. I love some of your songs, uh, but it, it is actually pretty loud. Yes. There we go. I do like the music, but it interferes with the audio of the everything else at, at times. Uh... Limits 10 o'clock to 18 o'clock, food 9 to 13 o'clock. And it's currently 11 o'clock. Still 11 a.m., huh? 